In our previous video, we talked about what's basically the simplest model bearing any resemblance to a transformer you could imagine, the zero layer transformer. But now we're ready to go and graduate to a more complex model, the one layer attention only transformer. Now, it's only a little bit more complex, um, but it will be able to go and give us uh, some, some really interesting properties to study. Um, and I think will we'll help us understand uh, larger transformers in the future. Now, we're going to have to work through a non-trivial amount of theory. So it's worth maybe just briefly talking about why this is worth investing in um, or why I think why I think this will pay off to working through this theory. And the biggest reason is that we're going to be able to, in principle, fully understand a toy model. And well, I, I, I guess we, we, we often, I feel like we give up on fully understanding neural networks. And here, uh, we're going to be able to go and, and take you know, something that's, that's sort of a small transformer, um, and we're going to be able to, to get, get to a point where we will just be able to completely understand this model. Now, we'll have to look at some large matrices, and you know, it, we won't be able to keep it all in our head, but we'll, we'll be able to sort of explain um, all the behavior of this model by consulting some large matrices, and in principle, fully understand it. We're also going to develop some conceptual tools that I think are really useful um, for reasoning about larger models and will we'll continue to help us as we, as we go forward to, to larger models. And then finally, um, actually, it turns out that even though larger models and sort of genuine transformers are going to have uh, more complex circuits um, and, uh, and more complex behavior, some of the things that we observe in these models um, these, this toy model is gonna are gonna reoccur and sort of have some echoes, and so we'll see them again, and that'll it'll, we'll sort of get some useful intuition from studying this model. I think. Okay, so uh, we're studying a simplified model, and as the name suggests, the zero layer attention only transformer is, uh, or sorry, the one layer attention only transformer is a one layer model, and it's attention only, which means that it has no MLPs. Um, but there's two other smaller, those are, the, those are the big simplifications we've made, but there's two other smaller simplifications. Um, we're going to get rid of layer normalization. Uh, and that's just because layer normalization, um, we think, probably isn't a, a critical part of the story, um, but it is, would add a lot of bookkeeping and a lot of additional work to think through in our theory. Um, and similarly, we're going to ignore the biases or get rid of the biases. Um, because again, those would add a lot of complexity. Now, the, the model that I'm actually looking at when I, or will be looking at when I give you empirical results uh, later on, um, that'll be in another, in, a, in the follow-up video to this one, uh, will have, does actually have uh, layer norms and biases, um, but uh, I'm gonna align them to keep things simple. Okay, so uh, really, if we want to talk about an attention-only transformer, there's three steps, um, or at a very high level at least, you can summarize it in three steps, which are we're going to go and uh, embed our tokens. So we'll we'll represent our tokens as one hot vectors, and we'll multiply them by the embedding matrix. Then, um, for each attention head, we run the attention head and add it into the residual stream. So that corresponds to um, we have all these attention heads over here. We're going to add them in to the residual stream, this line down the middle. And then finally, we're going to go and uh, multiply by the unembedding matrix to get the logits. So that's how we'll get the logits, and that's, that's the output of our model. OK, so I'll, the, of course, we need to, you know, in order to actually understand this, we're going to need to dive into the attention heads in a lot more detail. And a relatively standard way to describe the attention heads um, might be something like this equation that we have at the top. Uh, so what is it saying? Well, it's saying something like, um, first, we produce the value vectors by multiplying the residual stream by WV. Then um, we go and we multiply, and we go and weight all those value vectors by our attention matrix. Um, so that moves, uh, yeah, goes and combines the, the value vectors for different tokens. Um, and that weighted combination uh, gets multiplied by WO so we can add it into the residual stream. Okay. Well, 
that's that 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 is a, a formal you know a definition of a of a of an attention head, but it's actually a kind of tricky definition to think about, and I think it obscures um, a lot of important facts about attention heads. Uh, and that's just kind of tricky because you know we on the one hand we have like these matrix matrix multiplies that we have to think about. On the other hand, we have you know this weighted combination that's kind of orthogonal to them, and it's it's kind of complex. And there's another way we could describe it, uh, which is using tensor products. So you might not be very familiar with tensor products, um, but uh, they're actually they're they're very convenient. And one way to think about them is that they allow us to accomplish the thing that uh, we we often accomplish by broadcasting or thinking about um, uh, you know multiplying certain dimensions when we when we program in TensorFlow or NumPy or PyTorch. Um, so yeah, it would be it would be very common for us to say, okay, well, you know, first we're going to go and multiply the vector uh, at each position for each token by W v. Okay, well, um, the way we'll write that is we'll go and we'll put, say that W v is on the right hand side of the tensor product, um, and it's identity on the left hand side, and that just means we're going to multiply every when we when we just have a matrix on the right hand side, it just means we uh, we multiply the vector for every token by that matrix. Okay, well, the next thing we need to do is go and weight things by the attention pattern. Um, okay, well, that's that's instead of going and multiplying um, every the vector for every for every token um, independently. Now we're going to go and independently mix the, every every component um, across tokens. So we're multiplying across the token dimension instead of multiplying across the um, the the I don't know the the vector dimension or the model dimension or something like that. So um, that we're going to represent that by multiplying on the left hand side. Okay. Well then we need to go and multiply by W O and multiply. We're going to multiply every vector, um, the vector for every token by W O. So that's that's like the thing that we did on at the beginning earlier when we multiplied on the right hand side. We're going to multiply on the have W O on the right hand side and that just means we multiply the vector um, every token's vector by by W O. Um, and one thing that's nice about tensor products is they have this identity that uh, all the things on the same side, you just multiply them together, all the things on the same side combine, um, and uh, all the things on the other side also combine, and they're just completely independent. So um, if we want to understand what the, if we want to multiply these together and combine them, we look at, for the right-hand side, we'll go and we'll multiply w, by WO, and then ID and WV, and ID collapses, so we just get WO, WV. And on the left-hand side, we have an ID and then an A and an ID. So we just get an, an A. Um, we just have the attention pattern. So what that's really saying is that this the, the attention patterns action is sort of independent of the WOWV action. Um, and they're, they're sort of separate things. So that, that's, one, that's one way we, you could think about it. Um, another way to think about this is, you know, what is an attention head fundamentally doing? An attention head moves information from the residual stream of one token to the residual stream of another token. And when it does that, it has to pick some subspace of the, the, the attention head that it's moving information from. It has to read some subspace, and it has to write that to um, that sub, the information that it read, the vector that it read, to this, a different subspace in the residual stream of the, of the, the second token. Well, WOWV describes which attention head, or sorry, which, which subspace we read from and write to. And A describes which token um, information moves from and to. So A moves, describes what the, the token that gets read from and, and written to, and WOWV describes the, the subspace of the token that we're reading from that we, we read from and, and where it gets written. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty cool way to think about attentions. Okay, so now we can um, go and plug that into the previous definition we had of an attention layer, where we were going and adding all the, the different uh, attention heads and um, then going and adding them to the residual stream. And, you know, there's another way we could write that, which is, uh, you know, if we fix, if we fix the attention pattern, now that's, that's the attention pattern is computed in a very nonlinear way, but if, if we pretend that it's a constant or that it's fixed, um, well, then all of this is linear. And so we could go and write it as uh, a, 
a linear transformation that acts on x0, where we have an identity plus um, all of these, um, well, they're, 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 they're tensors in the mathematical sense. And we can even plug that into our, you know, plug all of our equations together. And we get this, this final uh, final end-to-end -end description of a transformer in some sense. So uh, the identity term becomes W U W E. That's you know, you can think of that as um, well, it's gonna it's gonna end up being kind of like bigram statistics. And uh, for every attention head, we have this term here. And we'll, we'll return to this, um, this product on the right-hand side. It's, it's really interesting. Um, and in, in some ways is, is yeah, one of the most, most informative things we can use to think about in this model. Okay, so um, that first term uh, is going to, it's, it corresponds to this direct path down here, this one here. And it's gonna tend to represent bigram like statistics. Remember, in our previous video, we saw an identical term uh, in our zero layer transformer, and it was exactly the bigram, well, an approximation of the, the bigram log like that was, a, that was exactly what it was trying to do. And here, we're going to see that it's, it's going to do something a bit similar. Some of the bigram information will move into the attention heads, but um, the remainder will, will continue to be on that direct path. But we also have terms corresponding to all of these other paths. Right, so that's, those are all going to be in that sum on the right-hand side. And the sum has, each one of these parts of the sum is a, is a tensor product. And yeah, the, this describes where the attention heads attend. Um, and this describes if the attention head attends to a given token, how does that affect the logins? So if we attend to a given token, how do we affect the logic? So that, that, that's very interesting. That, um, that sort of tells us a very large story, large portion of the story of, of what, this, what this model's behavior is going to be. Now, the thing that we're missing is we still need to understand how the attention patterns get created. And then we'll, then we'll basically have a complete story. Um, yeah, now, I, I mentioned this earlier, but it's, uh, it's worth noting that this, this is, um, if you fix the attention pattern, linear. And that, that's something that we'll be able to get a lot of leverage out of. And in general, I think anytime you can go and split a function, you have a very complex function, but then you can split it into two things where if you hold one thing constant, it's a very simple function. If you hold the other thing constant, it's a very simple function. That's a, that's a nice point of leverage. And um, here's an example, where, a case where we have, have that kind of leverage. So that's, that's very nice. Okay, so how is the attention pattern computed? Well, the attention pattern computed is computed by going and dot producting keys and queries. So we dot product the keys and the queries. But OK, how are those computed? Well, the queries and the keys are going to be computed by taking the residual stream and multiplying by WQ or WK. And the residual stream is just the token times the embedding matrix. One hot the tokens represent as a one hot vector. So, um, so if, we, if we combine this together, we get WKWE and WQWE. And if we combine all of that together, uh, we'll find that the attention pattern um, is of the form of a softmax of um, the tokens on both sides and then this matrix in the middle. And that looks very similar to that uh, matrix that we saw earlier. And we'll see that it's, it's really telling us which tokens want to attend to which other tokens. Okay. Um, yeah, so we, we have these two really interesting uh, matrices. And they're both vocabulary by vocabulary sized matrices. And they seem to really be at the heart of this model's behavior. Okay, so why, why do we have those matrices? They might seem a little bit mysterious, like they're products of four different matrices together. And um, you know, why, why those matrices and, and what exactly do they mean? Well, okay, let's start with the first one. We're gonna call that um, the output value circuit or the output value matrix. Um, and that's its form. And what's going on here is if we say, okay, well, fundamentally what it means is it 
it, it's saying, if you attend to a token, this is how the logits will be affected. And if you want to understand what that effect is, well, okay, we start at the token that we attend to, we'll call that the source token, and we go through uh, WE, so we embed the token, and then we have to convert it into a value vector. So we convert it into a vac value vector by multiplying by WV. So we've gone through WE, we've gone through WV, and then we have to go, we go and the information gets moved by the intention pattern, and then it gets hit by WO. Okay, so um, we have to go, because we were going to go and add it back into the residual stream, so we need to multiply by WO and get hit by the unembedding, and that causes a change to the output. And uh, in the simplified model, that's, that's exactly linear. So this matrix here tells us how, uh, what effect every token will have if we, if we attend to it on the outputs. Okay, but the second circuit, this query key circuit, it tells us which tokens want to attend to which other tokens. Okay, so if you, again, let's start with the, the token that's being attended to. And if we run it through the embedding matrix and then multiply by WK, we get the key. And if on the other side, we're on the token that's gonna do the attending, we go and multiply by WE and then by WQ, we get the query. And so those two paths then meet in the middle and we have to transpose this side because to go and make things work. Uh, and that gives us this matrix, which tells us how much every token wants to attend to every other possible token. Now, this is ignoring um, the, the attention pattern also cares about uh, positional embeddings or um, some other probably you have to account for position in some way, and there's now a, a variety of mechanisms for, for doing that. Um, I'm going to elide that for now, and we'll see that there are a few attention heads that will care about position, and we'll, we'll need to go and just sort of uh, put that off to the side. Um, but you, you could make this, you'd, you'd add, an, if, you were, if you were just dealing with positional embeddings, you'd add another term, um, something that describes the, uh, the, which positions want to attend to which other positions, and which positions potentially want to attend to other tokens. That would probably be very small. Um, but uh, if we're just, yeah, you know, if we ignore the positions, that's that's exactly right. Okay, so that is um, the theory of uh, the theory that we're going to need to understand one layer attention only transformers. And if you're interested, uh, the next video will actually leverage this then to go and understand uh, one layer, yeah, understand the behavior of a of a one layer attention only transformer.